Chopping this bitch and go crazy, yeah Chopping this bitch and go stupid, yeah I'm so rich, I'm been rooming, huh? Fuck a bitch, I leave it clueless, yeah Six in the morning, I boot it up, pop out the molly I try my Ferrari, that's truck on your party I air out the shot and we drink out of water We run through your daughter, she's truck across the border I'm taking your motor, I bust on my molly I bust on my wrist and I'm walking to class And I'm taking your bitch and you can't tell me nothing Your nigga been rich if he say something stupid I'm sending him his, chopping this bitch and go crazy, yeah hey, Chopping this bitch and go crazy, ooh Your diamonds ain't so fugazi, ooh Your diamonds ain't so fugazi, ayy Hey, how come you turn that off? Hello everyone, welcome to the Killer Countdown where I rank all of my favorite kills and all of your favorite horror movies and franchises. My name's Rashawn Bass and today we're going to be taking a look at Friday the 13th, the final chapter which was released in 1984 and directed by Joseph Zito. This installment has a total of 14 kills, but before I get to my official rankings, let me go over the victims I will not be including. First one, go to Mrs. Jarvis who was killed completely off screen. All you have is that one little weak reaction from her and that was it. Uh, there's no emotional weight even though she's the main character's mother and there was no body reveal. Next up is Samantha who is just another Kevin Bacon kill from the original movie. She has a really stupid face up so it made me laugh. Next up is Terry. I love the silhouette but it's just not rank worthy unfortunately. Now with three victims being left off the official rankings here are my top 11 kills in the final chapter. And at number 11 goes to Rob, who was bludgeoned to death with a garden harrow. I really like watching Jason just unleash all kinds of mayhem on Rob down there, but the reason why it ranks so low is because of what Rob was yelling. It was just way too funny. Number 10 goes to Jimmy who was stabbed with a corkscrew in his hand and then he got a machete to the face. You know I love it when people take really sharp objects to the face but unlike Marcy from part 1 and Mark from part 2, there was no real suspenseful build up to it. He was just looking for the damn corkscrew. Boom, corkscrew in hand, meat cleaver to the face and they cut away from the money shot which was, you know, <laughs> the cleaver in the face a little bit too quickly for me to really want to rank this any higher. And number nine is Sarah who was hit in the chest with an axe through a door. I love this because of how random it was. I just, I was expecting her to actually open the door and then have Jason just, you know, hit her with the axe, but it was just, it was way too sweet. Now, 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 had the axe actually hit her in the face, I guarantee you this would have been a top five kill. Cause you know I love that shit. In the 8th spot goes the Hitchhiker who was stabbed through the back of the neck with a knife. The moment I heard the twig snapped, I got instant goosebumps, but before they can even go away, that's when he grabbed her hair and then he just stabs her through the back of the neck and then that shot when you see the blade go through the front of the throat. That was an amazing shot and just a great kill overall. Number 7 is Paul, who got speared in the groin. Not much to say, it's a spear to the dick. So I had to give it lucky number seven. The sixth spot goes to Double Mint Twin Tina, who was thrown through the window onto the car. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. <gasps> Out the window, onto the car, onto the car. But anyway, I love the fact that all you hear is the rain before he actually grabs her through the window. Uh, to myself and many other people, you know, rain, you know, the sound of rain is very soothing and relaxing. And what the movie did was provide a false sense of security. I was relaxed at that point in time, and then out of nowhere, that's when you see him crash through the window and then throw her out of it. That's what made me jump because I was just in a relaxed state of mind, so it was just great. And what I really loved was the actual shot um, when she actually landed onto the car in slow motion and you saw the glass just explode out of the sides. That was just excellent execution. No pun intended. Starting out my top five is Ted who was stabbed in the back of the head. Bars. Hearing him gasp with his eyes wide was good. What I also really liked was actually seeing the screen rip as his body collapsed and left a little blood trail. Who's a dead fuck now, Ted? At number four is Axel, who was hacksawed in the throat and then his head was turned 180 degrees. I was completely caught off guard here. 
and I loved it. And then seeing Jason twist his head as far back as I did just made me squirm. And I, and this was the perfect kill to start off the movie, I, I must say that. Rounding out my top three goes to Nurse Morgan who was gutted with a scalpel. The sound of her work clothes actually tearing and then the sound of her screams is just, just put this way over the top and it actually made my stomach turn just thinking about her being completely Gut it with a fucking scalpel. Just how brutal is that, man? And in at number two is Jason, who was stabbed in the head with his machete and then hacked to death. At this point, he has a body count of 34 victims, and seeing his his murderous rampage come to an end was a sight to behold. You thought it was over till Tommy saw Jason's fingers start twitching, so he picked up his machete and started hacking at him again. See, little Tommy Jarvis did what the girl should have done in parts two and three, okay? You just go to town on him with his machete or, or with the axe to just keep going, and when that arm gets tired, use the other arm. And you just keep chopping that motherfucker until the screen turns white. That's the cardinal rule. You keep going till the screen turns white. And the number one kill in Friday the 13th, the final chapter, goes to Doug, whose head was crushed against the shower wall. Despite how brutal all of the kills were, this one here gave me the moment where I knew Jason was actually pissed off and that he means business. For starters, I knew Doug was screwed. I was panicking because of how funny and silly he was acting in the shower, but at any second his life was going to end and it was going to be completely painful. Jason's hand comes through the glass and Doug's fate was sealed. But why was this number one? It's because this was the only point in time in the movie where you actually got a close-up shot of Jason while he was actually killing someone. Like, looking back, like this was phenomenal. <laughs> it's just just the point it was it was less than a second that it was on screen and it was able to relay such a message to me that yeah okay they got one over me last time but you know what now you're fucked because I'm back and I'm pissed the fuck off. And there we have it, my official rankings for Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter. In the comment section below, tell me exactly how you'll rank all these kills. Once again, my name's Rashawn Bass. This was the Killer Countdown. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to join the Killer Countdown clan. Just don't go burning any crosses now.